In 1968, Crenshaw High School opened a 25-acre flagship campus in South LA that would level the playing field between schools in black neighborhoods and schools in white neighborhoods. At the time, school leaders promised this school would reduce overcrowding, offer one-of-a-kind classes, and feature cutting-edge media technology. Years later, this school is now battling with a questionable reputation and dwindling enrollment. So how did this promising school end up with a reputation of academic underachievement, gang violence, but a championship winning sports team? And is this even still true today? Special thanks to Rodney Little for suggesting this episode for the recap. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the South LA Recap. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to learn more about South LA on the regular. In today's episode, we're gonna look at Crenshaw High School's history, and we're gonna see how this school has transformed over time in more than 50 years of serving students. With new funds from a 1960 school bond, the Los Angeles School Board of Education planned a series of new schools to offset the rapidly growing population of the city of Los Angeles. In its expansion strategy, South LA would get two brand new high schools, Crenshaw High School and Elaine Leroy Locke High School, which were both designed to alleviate the rising enrollment pressures at Dorsey, Manual Arts, and Washington High Schools. In March of 1963, the Los Angeles School Board announced plans to buy 130 parcels of land for the proposed Crenshaw High School in the Park Mesa Heights community, which is just south of Lamert Park and View Park, Windsor Hills. By 1966, the 25 acres were secured by the board and the school was ready to move forward with construction with an expected opening date of January 1968. In April of 1966, the school was expected to cost $6.5 million. It would include over 80 classrooms, a library resource center, a two-story shop building, a boys and girls gymnasium, a cafeteria, a multi-purpose building, a ceramic building, and the physical education field. On top of the new opportunity-bound buildings, the school board promised a specialized curriculum that would include foreign language. The development of the school in a growing black neighborhood was huge because the Los Angeles Unified School District was accused of segregating its schools across the city for decades. As early as 1942, black residents protested against the Los Angeles Board of Education, claiming the school district manipulated boundary lines to enroll fewer black students. This rezoning practice excluded many black students from nearby schools with large white populations. Now, in a turn of events, Crenshaw High School, the most modern school at the time, would now be accessible to students in black neighborhoods. The Los Angeles School Board, acknowledging former claims of segregation, believed that the Crenshaw High School would attract students, regardless of race, from other parts of the districts because of its specialized curriculum. By early January of 1968, days before the spring semester began, the construction of the school was behind schedule, but the Los Angeles School Board promised that it would still admit students despite several buildings being unfinished across campus. The district expected a spring enrollment of 1,650 students. Crenshaw High School started off as a booming success. At the start of its fall semester, it was chosen as the first high school in Los Angeles to receive a closed circuit television for science and math department usage. Crenshaw was also reported as one of the first high schools to offer a course in laboratory animal technology. It also had a strong mock trials program where students staged trials in the Los Angeles Superior Courtroom. The Crenshaw High School had a chapter of Future Farmers of America coupled with an agricultural program that produced countywide winners in livestock, crops, and horticultural projects. And in March of 1971, only three years into the school's existence, the notorious Crenshaw High School basketball team won its first basketball championship. Despite being an inner city school, Crenshaw High School proved otherwise with its fantastic instruction and award-winning students. But things could only get better from here, right? One way or another, success comes to an end. And for Crenshaw, it actually happened pretty early, maybe about four or five years into the school's existence. One thing that happened, I've noticed in the 70s, is that the school was actually reported on less frequently. And while I can't really connect it or say it's causated, 
I think it has a lot to do with how the relationship of black students changed with schools on the west side and in the valley. In the 1970s, a series of court rulings propelled Los Angeles Unified School District to begin busing economically disadvantaged kids from their neighborhoods to more affluent neighborhoods for schooling. Knowledge of busing here is very critical because for the first time for students in LA, they weren't limited to their neighborhood schools. And this changed the game for a lot of South LA families. At the same time, in the early 70s, the reporting of Crenshaw High School transitioned from being overwhelmingly positive to almost a weekly crime watch. Like this report of a high school student shot on campus on his way to class during a mugging gone wrong, or this Crenshaw student among many others who was expelled for assaulting a teacher with his fist. Even worse is the time when the school's black principal called the school Fort Crenshaw in the face of rising gang violence that hindered the once monumental and specialized instruction. The worst story I read was in 1975 where a group of vandals broke into the high school and caused over $45,000 in damages. And that loss was the closed circuit television system which, only seven years earlier, Crenshaw was the first school in the city to receive. This uptick in violence didn't help the school when it found itself at the crux of Los Angeles' school bus debates. In 1977, the Los Angeles Unified School District was transporting more than 18,000 students, mostly black students, to schools in white neighborhoods. Some parents in South LA felt like the schools on the west side and in the valley were not only safer, but of a better quality. In one article in particular, a Time staff writer wrote a piece on how many black families were divided on sending their student to the local school or busing them farther away. One parent who lived in the vicinity of Crenshaw said, Crenshaw High isn't safe. I don't want my kids shot or knifed. I don't want to expose them to the violence, the police cars circling around the schools at all times. That article cut so deep that the Crenshaw High School Student Government Association actually wrote an op-ed in response to that article the following week. They said, to categorize Crenshaw as a school of violence is grossly unfair when violence in schools is a community-wide, city-wide, nationwide occurrence, highly publicized in some areas and a well-kept secret in others. Despite the school's growing association with crime and loss of instruction, there was one thing that remained consistent the entire time of Crenshaw's history, the sports. In fact, by the 1980s, the LA Times limited much of its reporting to the high school sports teams. In the late 70s and early 80s, you'll find early sports reports of Daryl Strawberry, then a burgeoning high school baseball player at Crenshaw. And the Crenshaw high school basketball team, of course, remained undisputed champions. And the school became almost solely known for its athletics, but that didn't help its enrollment. In the 90s, Crenshaw High School saw a resurgence outside of sports. For starters, in performing arts, the school saw a revival in its music program that later had its choir perform for Prince Charles during his visit to Los Angeles in 1994. And there was also a revival of the school's agricultural program, where students owned and created products through their student-ran farming business. Today, as the Park Mesa Heights and the Crenshaw neighborhoods see a demographic transformation, the Crenshaw High School has struggled to maintain its once strong enrollment. In 1974, Crenshaw High School enrolled 2,900 students. By 1985, the school's population dwindled to around 1,800 students. And even with growing school pride and revamped offerings, the enrollment in 2012 fell to just over 1,200 students. As an effort to reimagine the school and build more appeal to families, Crenshaw High School split into three magnets in 2013. Today, you'll find a science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine magnet, a business entrepreneurship magnet, and a visual and performing arts magnet. Crenshaw High School has an enrollment of around 750 students. But this student enrollment issue is rampant in Southwest Los Angeles. The once overcrowded schools of Dorsey and Crenshaw had to cancel their football openers this year because there were too few students enrolled. 
Even with falling enrollment, there are still developments planned for the school. In 2018, Crenshaw High School started a $100 million renovation that would include a new cafeteria and a new performing arts center. Today, the once booming high school competes with so many others, but in it, there is something uniquely representative of the South LA region and its history. So that's all I have for this episode, and I hope that you all learned something new today. If you have any comments about Crenshaw High School or want to share your own history of the school and your own experiences with it, leave it down in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys around on the recap.